Hello everyone and welcome back to Critique Clinic, the video series where we give our patrons and you advice on how you can improve your miniature painting. Let's jump in and have a look at some of the fantastic entries which we've got this week. Okay, our first submission comes from Harp98 who says, Hi guys, would appreciate some feedback on this guy on how to take him to the next level. I think I could do a cooler base maybe, a resin printed one. So first up, we've got this awesome knight, a uh, really, really rich, warm red scheme. I'm a big fan of red, so you're hitting the brownie points there straight away. Um, really nice uh, sort of like two-tone effect with the metallic being darker and the armor being brighter. And I do really like the sort of uh, battle damage and certain wear, like a grim dark kind of vibe to it as well, which is quite nice. Yeah, it is really grim dark. I really like as well the the gradient on the red. Like it's got that really nice sort of dark shadow tones and the gradients on all the panels. It really has a lot of like depth, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, just getting into like things to improve right off the bat. I mean, obviously this is a really, really nicely painted piece all the areas are really nicely defined like all the metallics and everything's blocked out nicely and neat got some really cool transfers on here as well so off the bat i mean it looks fantastic um the first thing i'd be looking to improve actually would be you've got this really nice like weathered uh chipped effect on all of the red but i'm not really seeing any of that on the metallics they're looking a bit flat um especially like the silver um so one thing that i would do is go in with a, a brighter metallic silver um, and just start doing some like little chips and some scuffs and some edge highlights on some of these corner panels. I mean, you haven't got necessarily fully edge highlight uh, all of the metallics because I know that's not really the style that you're doing here. Um, but just picking out like, especially on things like the tilt shield and like on this upper area on the carapace here, shoulder pads, things like that. If you just go with like a really, really bright silver um, and just add some like little chipping onto the edges of those panels, I think that would look great. You could do that with sponges or with the side of a brush. Um, and as well, you could just do some like nice fine scratches, much like you've done for for the red as well. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the things that I noticed, I've always talked about consistency across a model, and you've done some really fantastic uh, weapon effects, like on the melter cannon and also on the uh, Gatling gun. That sort of subtle cordite kind of charge kind of like uh, sort of look on the end of the barrels is great. The one thing I did notice is the melter gun that's kind of like on the shoulder, uh, the barrel on that hasn't been done. Um, obviously, if you've got like a, a same weapon types, obviously melter weapons here in this case, obviously for the gun arm and also the one on the carapace, they'd still have the same effect. So just go in and do that sort of charred, sort of like burnt effect on the end of the melter as well. I think that would just really sort of sell that all the weapons are functional and that it's got the same kind of like energy or usage, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's nice continuity as well. Yeah. It ties everything together. Um, one other thing that I'd like to point out here as well, um, a bit of a pet peeve is uh, we always say how important it is before you even put paint on the model, putting a lot of attention into the cleaning and the preparation of the surface. Yeah, definitely. One thing that is jumping out to me is this, I'm not sure if it's a seam line or a mold line on the it's sort of hip joint here. Um, regardless of which that is for me personally, I would have spent just a little bit more time just going in and smoothing that out. Um, purely because it, it, does detract from the paint job for me personally. It's, it's quite a, a prominent area. It is. It's yeah. quite visible. Um, and I think as, as well, it's like something that I always talk about, like the sense of breaking immersion. So when I'm looking at a piece, I want to be sort of like lost in the world of it and like appreciating the model for what it is. Things like this remind me that I'm looking at a miniature, something that's been assembled. Um, yeah. And I think especially when everything else is done so, so cleanly, things like that look worse than they are, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's not too late to go in with that, by the way. Like, I think a lot of people are afraid of cleaning these things after the fact, but you can go in with some fine sandpaper or with a knife blade and just blocking in that area back over after the fact. You haven't got to worry about priming it again, especially for such a small area. Um, just doing a little bit of tidy up there for me would really, really help to elevate the piece. Tell me a sand in foam. It's the one. Now, moving yeah. on to the thing that you you mentioned, obviously, in, in the description of this, like the base. Again, I think it's good that you use green tones, obviously contrasting the red really well based on color theory. I think um, the the ground as well being dark is quite nice. If like You've chosen, obviously, like a bit of a dark base and a light base with the, the mix of kind of like the bushes and, flat and like tufts and grass and stuff you put on there. Um, I think really one of the ways that you could kind of improve the base is just add on some larger like details, like some rocks or slate and stuff like that, just to add a, a variance of ground cover in size and scale. Like um, I'd imagine that when the night moves forward, it, it sort of like breaks the ground up potentially, or it causes sort of like rock, it could kick a rock or things like that, like all different things. So just try and vary up the size of the material actually on the base. And then again, with your greens, you've done a good job of mixing up some of the tones. Just add lots of different tones of greens on green on there. And because the red is quite bright, I'd probably go similar sort of brightness with the green, just so you've got a similar sort of contrast value between the two colors. That's probably what I would do. Yeah. And I think additionally on that as well, I think um, one thing for me is like the, the basing material itself looks very, very like regular and uniform. You've got a very, very harsh sort of defined line, which, you know, in the real world, you don't really see a lot of, you know, if this was two different materials next to each other, there would be some like blending between yeah, the two, yeah. if that makes sense. So I think perhaps like if you've got two different materials here, sprinkling a little bit between the two or using your dry brushing, 
uh, or you're highlighting for the basing material to just sort of blend those two together. Definitely, um, yeah. Bleeding onto each other's surface. I think that would really help as well. Yeah, no, but overall, really fantastic miniature. Uh, well presented and uh, just those little bits and bobs. I think you think you'll just notch it up a little bit and always give you that continuity, which is important. 100%. Yeah, great work. Next up, Peter Winters Gill says... Uh, really trying to perfect the heavy metal style at the moment as I'm aspiring to paint for Games Workshop one day. Any advice would go a long way. Had some issues with the blends and glazing, so getting that nailed is key. I'll send in some other bits down the line as having trouble with organics mostly. Uh, just sign up to the patron today and excited to make my way through all the tutorials. Well, the model is fantastic. Uh, really consistent, super sharp, really refined. Uh, all the things that for the thing that you're aspiring to do, they do look for, which is great. I think it's really well presented. Everything reads really well for, as well. The flesh, the metals, the, the livery on the tilt shield, the script, all the little nuanced details like the ultramarine symbol on the parchment. There's so many little great little things, attention to detail that you've done on this. Um, I don't think personally, like you're far off with regards to that. I, I noticed what you said about the glazing and things. And I think that's probably one of the things that from looking at the miniature, we've both spoken about, like, I think you do need to just need to glaze it a little bit more. I think some of the newer style of heavy metal paint jobs tends to have a bit more going on with regards to glazing. And, and I think adding that onto this miniature a bit bit stronger potentially might potentially aid, aid the look of it overall. Yeah. I think in regards to that glazing as well, if you look at the um, Indomitus uh, box art in particular, there's a lot of weathering within that glazing yeah. and shading. And I think just like studying the sort of style here, you've got a little bit of scratching and weathering and stuff on this. So I'd say this for me kind of almost looks like a little bit of a hybrid of the two of the yeah. like really, really clean style and the sort of much more uh, gritty style that they've done for that release. Yeah. Um, I think maybe considering like incorporating some elements from that might be um, a good a good place to start with the with glazing. Definitely, yeah. I think one of the things to one of the things to just say is that like when you're trying to paint to, to that that level, I think one of the most important things is just to make sure that absolutely everything is as refined as physically possible and also consistency overall in everything. So one of the things I really liked about the model was the fact that like you haven't skimped anywhere that I can see. Like for example, even the cut leaving the screamer killer on the base all the rocks and stone they've got interesting patterns and markings and notches and all those kind of things so i think you've done a really good job of, uh, of refining the piece overall it's really really clean it's really yeah. really clean paintwork everything has got a, a lot a lot of attention on it um the edge highlights are super sharp well defined your like heavy metal style with like the chunky and the thin and then the corner highlights are picked up really really nicely as well so we can tell that you've put in the put in the hours of uh practicing this this style Definitely. Oh, the only thing I picked up on that I just thought I'd just chuck in as a comment is like on the central parchment hanging between the legs, um, some of the recesses are quite dark. Um, like, and, and the other thing, to, and it looks almost like black in some areas. One thing I would definitely say, irrespective of the fact that like the heavy metal box art style, all the edges being lit up and refracting light or having reflections isn't natural to lighting. One of the things I would say is that the, the recesses on that parchment wouldn't be jet black or as dark as you've painted them they'd be a lot softer in my opinion i think it's um for me that potentially as well comes down to like the transition of it itself so like it's one thing to go that dark on the shading but to do it that stark without sort of any real transition i think is maybe where that's coming from because if you look at some of like the purity still hanging off the tilt shield for example it's a lot more subtle it's lovely yeah, and yeah. The transitions are really nice and soft um and even the one adjacent to this um but this one yeah i, I do agree it is quite dark in some areas in particular sort of this one in the middle uh the one at the top and this one at the bottom um, I think I would have gone a little bit softer with the colors used, but yeah. if you were going to go that dark, I would definitely go for a softer transition between those um, rather than like a really, really sharp yeah, uh, recess shade. That is it. I think that's one of the things from looking at the model all over, like when you look at all the, a lot of the recess shading that is on the model, it, it is, I mean, one, one thing I would say is that doing a soft shadow and a deep shadow, so doing two stages of pin shading so that you've got like softer areas that aren't as, as desaturated and dark. And then where they are deepest, you do apply a bit more of a, of a deeper shadow just to obviously push the contrast into those areas. It does appear that a lot of the recess shading on the model, especially around like the crux on the leg, for example, the crux on the shoulder pad um, and some of the sort of recesses around the gorget and neck area, they're very, very dark in the sense of their color. And I think that if you just done a few stages of that, but each stage being a little bit less dark would would just make it look overall a little bit softer potentially. Yeah, I do agree. I mean, obviously we're being like super, super nitpicky with this yeah. painting style because one, you're a very, very proficient paint, painter. Very, very, very proficient um, painter. And also, you know, like you say, you are aspiring to improve as much as possible. So obviously we are going pretty hard pretty hard yeah. on the feedback here. Um, <laughs> it's very hard to find something that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's sort of like off with this, like exactly. being honest. Um, 
if, if I was going to pull up like again, like super nitpicks, but I, I would have added some glazing on towards the bottom of the the shoulder pad as well, like you've done on the leg, just to keep that continuity there of the armor. Yeah. Um, and also, this is actually an area that I struggle with, especially. So, uh, sympathise with this, but for me, the silvers just a little bit flat for me personally. I think the the high again really nitpicking here, aren't I? But uh, the highlights, like particularly around sort of the lettering on on the on the sword here on the blade, I think could have been a little bit sharper. Um, and I think like glazing a brighter transition in towards the tip of the sword could have helped to add some like tonal variation as well. Yeah. Um, don't be afraid to blend and glaze with metallics. You absolutely can do it, um, much like you would for any other paint. Um, and I think that, that would really, really help just to add a, another level of dimension. I think you can get away with it on like weapon casings and things like that. But yeah. when you've got a really, really big flat blade like this, I think it, it's just needing a little something extra. Yeah, definitely. And I've got to say like the last thing, the face looks great. Like all the individual, all yeah. the individual teeth, like the, the eyes and stuff like that. Um, I, on a lot of heavy metal paint jobs, they tend to put like the refraction of light white dot in the black. And that's like the tiniest little thing. And then, like I said, it's not, it's not like a negative that you haven't done it. Cause I think the eyes and face look really, really good, but just little things that, maybe just mention them just so that if you do want to try them or push it a bit for a bit further then potentially put that try and get that catch light in the uh in the, on the pupil as well potentially yeah but uh, uh incredible work overall. yeah phenomenal um, fantastic um keep at it keep at it next up ashley mack says i've just done the emc course with simon uh i know i have to go lighter but looking at placement of secondary light or reflection light source any feedback is welcomed as this is my fourth attempt on non-metallic metal so just as a caveat, like non-metallic metal is not something that I or George do a lot. Uh, we don't do it in the level of, of doing it on a full complete model. We'll probably do trims and things like that. But um, but just to give feedback on sort of like the glazing and volumetrics and things like that on this. Um, great attempt. Obviously, really, really great use of color, obviously, on the model. I'm obviously biased on the miniature. But, um, <laughs> but when it comes to secondaries and things like that, I think one of the most important things is that understanding that volumes and the way that light interacts with them is a language in itself and understanding how certain shapes light up with light in general, irrelevant direction to start off with. Just understanding the shapes and types of highlights that actually appear on those volumes and shapes. Um, with secondaries, obviously, you don't want them to be as strong, potentially, as a, as a, as a main light source. If you've got four light sources, then that potentially you've got to scale different light sources and secondaries and other reflections in different areas in different ways. Generally speaking, what I would recommend you do, get your main light point established first and do all your blending to that. And once that's on, then it gives you the scope and area to then put your secondaries on in places that you that feel appropriate to the volume and from where light's coming from. The other thing I'll just touch in, uh, uh, touch on about is literally if you've got things next to the metallics, like for example, on this Dante model, his cloth, let's just say it's red, obviously in between his legs, you might want to do some glazing of like a red on the inner parts of the legs to show the reflection of that red material on the metallic or gold. Um, it just tells a story and it incorporates those pieces and different materials together, which, which works quite nicely. Yeah, I agree with all of that. I think as well, it's like, it's obviously it's quite difficult to, to give super nitty gritty feedback on this because it is yeah. a work in progress. So a lot of things we're going to say, you're going to obviously know because it's not finished yet. Um, I think the tones you've actually like really, really nailed with the yellow um, and the the color choice for the shading, I think is really, really nice. Um, I think this is a case of like, you need to push it further to, NMM is difficult, isn't it? Because you spend a lot of time of it not really quite looking right yet. And Until you all, put the later stage on. Starts coming together. Yeah. So I think we need to see like brighter uh, highlights on here, like all the way up to to white really, um, just to get the full like gamut of, of the darkest shallows all the way to the brightest points just to sort of see how that light placement is working and how the non-metallic effect is sort of going to finish off i think don't get too caught up in the like really really smooth blends like focus on getting the light placement and all of the colors on and then afterwards go in and start refining those transitions because we said it in a previous episode really really loose like just sketched on non-metallics can look way more realistic than yeah. something that is really, really smooth, but hasn't been sort of fully finished yet. If that Correct. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you look at real metallic things in natural lighting, you'll see that the highlights and stuff are actually very harsh on them. Um, it's the complete opposite of having a completely smooth non-metallic, but, um, but yeah, again, real life reference is going to be your best friend, especially for like secondaries, understanding volumes and how light interacts with objects. I recommend that massively. Yeah. Uh, we look forward to seeing this finished. So do uh, drop us some photos when that is. So. Okay. Next up we have twisted tree once again, who says many thanks for the feedback about my impulsor. The chapter name, by the way, is The Silent Knights. Uh, while I'm painting more of them, I'd love some feedback on the old Aina model from Mordheim. I was trying to work on the different textures and materials as well as practicing glazing. My first attempt at non-metallic metal and OSL. So this is actually a really cool old Mordheim model, which uh, again, it's really minimalist in its details, but it's a very, very fun miniature to paint. Um, 
great overall execution. I think there's some really nice things on there. I love the use of the sort of pink foliage at the back. I think that's quite cool as well. Um, I'm going to go straight in and talk about the cloth. Uh, so this is something that I talk about quite a bit. A material and fabric uh, doesn't light the way that a lot of people think instinctively that it lights. And that, what I mean by that is you've got to take fabric as like, it has different facets and it's the angle of the fabric that totally determines the way that light interacts with it and the vibrancy or desaturation or darkness on there. Light doesn't typically tend to fall in the deepest part. When the sun's so high in the sky so far away, light hitting an object and it one layer being slightly higher than the other doesn't mean that it's brighter or darker. It's purely the angle of the fabric to light that determines if it's bright or dark. So with this, I think a lot of the stuff that you've done in there is great. I just think a lot of the shadows typically, if they're not under an underhang of fabric as in if it's hanging then it wouldn't be shadowed so especially at the top of the shoulder um like there's some areas that are quite dark there's some recesses that are quite dark that really could be a lot softer because light would still hit them because they're flat to light rather than being angled away um whereas on the lower portion where those overhangs are you definitely definitely would have more shadow there just purely because the light can't physically wrap around and go onto the underside um what with uh, the material and the fabric it does look potentially that it might have been a, either dry brushed or maybe sort of like stippled potentially i think you can be a lot softer with the jumps in color to add a bit more of an, a general feel of the color across the material but it, it looks great i think there's just a little bit of refinement maybe you could glaze in some colors there just to soften it down slightly um but overall yeah i think it's i think it's done really well i think there's a potentially a little bit of like taste and preference to that as well because I think if you're trying to sort of simulate effect of something that is quite like worn and, yeah. and ratty then I think you are selling that effect I'd actually argue personally. with like yeah, with the way it's yeah, been yeah. yeah 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 um just to go into some of the other details on this I think the freehand is really cool that you've added that it's a nice way of adding some interest and uh sort of elevating a piece like this especially as that would otherwise be quite a flat area and there's not really a lot to draw the eye sort of in this bottom left direction uh, aside from the basing obviously um, so I actually really like this. I would say potentially you could just sharpen this up a little bit. Um, and what I mean by that is you've got sort of some varying line weight. Um, so down here, if you look, there's like a, a much, much sort of sharper point where presumably you've sort of finished a stroke. And as you pulled away with the brush, it's gotten nice and sharp. Um, don't be afraid to go in with the, the base color tone of the cloth and sort of do this little bit of a back and forth with once you paint that free handed line, it's not necessarily like set in stone. You can go and sort of cut back cut in with it. that cream color. Um, just to sort of sharpen that up. Yeah, definitely. Um, things I do like, I, I really love the sort of non-metallic effect you've done on the sword. I think there's some like really cool color tones and stuff in here, I think, which works really, really well. Um, you mentioned the foliage in the background. Personally, um, I actually do think stuff like this is quite cool, but for me personally, I like to see it painted. I, I like it because it contrasts the blue on the sword. Yeah, I, I do like the color choice, but I think it's that thing of like, you know how sometimes people will use like sand on base yeah, material yeah. and then not paint it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. For me, it kind of feels a little bit like that. I, if you haven't got an airbrush, uh, then you could do that with uh, just some sponging, sponging yeah. or, uh, you know, even dry brushing if you're careful with it. Um, but if you have got an airbrush, then I would probably use that as a starting point for just getting some, some paint on there and some tones on there. Just because light behaves with this stuff like quite differently and it does stand out as like not being painted if that makes sense no, i do totally. think the idea is there though no, i get that totally that's personal preference as yeah, well no, no. yeah another thing that i noticed is the gem on the cross guard of the blade i think you've done a really good job on that like you put a catch light on there which shows really good brush control it's a nice cause sort of volumetric highlight of showing the shape of the gem and the light refracting through it as well um potentially something to consider is because you've got some yellow tones with the gold around there you've got a bit of blue on the blade potentially maybe consider doing the gem and this is an opinionated statement potentially red because in that way you've got a nice primary color triad of the blue the red and the yellow with the gold um but there's nothing wrong with the color you chose and i think it's great and the gems executed really well yeah really cool piece overall it's nice to see some uh, some older miniatures yeah some as well yeah great work and finally we have ether who says been painting for a little over a year this is my last completed space marine i would like to continue to improve but i'm not sure how any feedback is appreciated Okay, first up, uh, bonus points for Blood Angels, obviously. You chose the right show for that. Yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> put that aside. Um, this is a really, really nice paint job. Um, I can sympathize as well with that sort of not knowing where is next for you in terms of like improving your painting. I think um, a lot of people get to like a comfortable level and like have this nice comfort zone of you paint a lot of the similar stuff and you sort of get in a bit of a groove for it and you're liking how it's looking and you don't really know what's next. Um, I think one thing to focus on potentially is like, I, this is obviously like sort of that more like box art style. Yeah. I would say for me, this is sitting in like a little bit of a middle ground between like an airbrushy style, quote unquote, yeah. style and a box art style, um, which is not nothing wrong with that at all. Um, for me personally, I prefer sort of a more overall top down sort of zenith look to highlighting and shading. Um, 
Whereas this has got that more sort of like, I don't know if it's more like realistic, but like the, the sort of inside sort of shaded areas. Yeah. So like you've gone for sort of the, the inner legs as being darker rather than this sort of like top down effect, if that makes sense. Um, I think maybe just experimenting with like the way light is behaving on your models could be a cool way to do that. If you think about like, this is why zenithal highlighting is so popular. Is that like, whereas your light sources are coming like directly from above at like a 45 degree angle or like a 90 degree angle. Um, whereas this for me kind of looks like you've got like multiple light sources going on from sort of either side, if that makes sense, because all of your shading is kind of like on the inside of the model. Yeah, I agree. Rather than having this sort of volumetric look to the overall uh, three dimensions, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. for me, that would mean on the leg panel, for example, rather than having all of the shading on this inside edge, it would be a more top-down look. So you'd have like the brightest points would be the upper area of this and the darkest points would be the lower area of this. You'd have the underside of the knee plate because it's a sphere, like the light would be going all the way around this yeah, yeah, and so on and so forth. Similar with like how it's a bit like inconsistent with how these hip plates are highlighted and shaded because one's on the outside and one's sort of more leaning onto the inside, if that makes sense. So I'd maybe just try and do some experiments with like the way light behaves on your models and look at if you want to do like one primary light source or multiple light sources and like how that's behaving with how you're highlighting the miniatures. Cause bear in mind as well, you are doing full edge highlighting, which is why I say this is like a weird hybrid potentially because yeah. you've, you've gone for this like double natural, light source, natural, natural yeah. shading, but you've got the full edge highlights as well. So I think that's maybe why there's a little bit of disparity there. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. I mean, the thing I was going to add on to like add on to this, I think that again, the model is really lovely. Um, I think one of the things to, add to the model and, and just give more value to it and really kind of start understanding materials and things like that is obviously like things for example like the belt like obviously you've got the belt buckle here that it would be armored it's ceramite but then obviously you've got this part here that on a lot of models you see it's painted as like a leather or, or a different color material or something um that would just add a bit of interest to it it gives you opportunity to do things like potentially a little bit of weathering on there to show that it's aged if it's leather um all those kind of things i think general interest on the miniature is something that i wanted to kind of like add add on to this like you've painted these these buttons here for example on the van brace which is great it really shows function and that it actually has some 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 usability of the, uh, that area of the miniature um other things you can do is like the chain sword that has also got some buttons on it i don't know if i can't see in the photos but you could potentially if you haven't add the, the color onto those buttons to show the function of the chain sword um but really i think the next thing for the, that i wanted to add on to this was just obviously just like materials and looking at details and stuff um with the edge in and it's something i also just wanted to touch upon really quickly um obviously you've gone for like a, a fully edged style on this one thing's to, to do is obviously just make it super consistent everywhere so if you look at the, the fingers for example they don't have edges on them so you've edged the gauntlet the van brace the knees the shoulder everything but the actual individual finger panels of armor aren't edged so it's just that same attention and just making everything a bit more consistent with each other and that's me being super critical the model is fantastic and looks great i'm obviously very biased but <laughs> but um but i think yeah i think you've done a great job and it's just those little things that add so much more and bonus points for the mark 7 helmet <laughs> yeah i completely agree i think just on that point as well of like adding extra visual interest i think an easy thing to be would be to do is uh adding some transfers yeah so you, you know you've got knee plates you've got the shin plates you've got the shoulder pad as well yeah definitely. like why not use that as an opportunity to add some additional visual interest to the miniatures yeah the space wing chapters have a lot of livery and i think it's good to, to add that richness of, of narrative to them through transfers as well but i totally agree well, a massive thank you to everyone for submitting to this episode of Critique Clinic. It's been really, really cool going through all of the entries. And we hope that even if your miniature wasn't featured in this episode, you hopefully found some valuable feedback on improving your painting. If you'd like to submit your miniature for a future episode, then check the link in the description of this video to our Patreon. And over there, as well as gaining access to hundreds of PDF tutorials, which are updated every single week, you'll also get access to Critique Clinic as well, so you can submit for future episodes. Thank you ever so much for watching the show. I hope you liked all the entries and we'll see you very soon on the next one.